Now, when we study the subject about not falling in love with the world, um, we have to ask, why is the scripture so vehemently opposed to us um, falling in love with the world? Why is the scripture so opposed to the world influencing us, right? Well, the answer is because the world is the agent for the kingdom of darkness. The world is the agent for the kingdom of darkness. I want to remind you, the Bible is the story of two kingdoms. There's the kingdom of God and there's the kingdom of Satan. The kingdom of light and the kingdom of darkness. And the devil uses the world as its tool to influence believers so that we do not give our all for the advancement of the kingdom of God. Are you picking up what I'm putting down? The world, the ways of the world, the culture of the world, the values of the world are the tools Satan uses to distract us, to divert us, and infect us so that we become powerless. So we do nothing to advance the kingdom of God. By the way, I want to remind you, God saved you not for you. He didn't save you for you. He saved you ultimately so that he could use your life for the advancement of the kingdom of God in this earth or on this earth. And the enemy's strategy is to use the ways of the world, the culture of the world, the things of this world to distract us, to divert us, and to consume us so that we don't give our all for the kingdom of God. Does this make sense to anybody? Listen, the world is the agent of the kingdom of darkness. John says in 1 John 5, 19, he says, we know that we are children of God and that the whole wor world is under the control of the evil one. The whole world is under the control of the evil one. The King James Version says the sway of the evil one. And so, so the enemy influences every domain of this world. He influences the educational domain. How in else do you take prayer out of school? It wasn't no believers who did that. The, the enemy uses the educational system to, to, to do his beckoning. The enemy uses the political system to do his deeds. The enemy uses the business domain to do his deeds. Now listen, um, Jesus called Satan the ruler of this world. The ruler of this world. Paul calls Satan, 2 Corinthians 4, 1, the God of this world. So hear me, my brothers and sisters. Satan uses the world as an agent um, to, to do his deeds. Now, let me remind you. The aim of the world is to distract us, divert us, ensnare us, and consume us. So that we don't give our all to the advancement of God's kingdom. This is the aim of the world. So listen, when I talk about the world in our study th today, I, I don't want you to think of people. I want you to think of the ways of the world. I want you to think of the culture of the world. And when I talk about how the enemy comes and uses the world uh, against us, I, I don't want you to just think of overt evil. A lot of times when Christians think of the world, uh, we think of overt evil such as um, drug addiction and alcoholism. But that is not the only thing the devil uses. The devil uses your job to get you to, to, to waste your time on chasing money. The devil uses credit cards. The devil uses your uh, self-centered dreams to get you to spend your energy on things that are not going to last or have an eternal impact. So when I talk about the world, I don't want you to just think of alcoholism and addiction per se. I want you to be able to, in fact, I want you to be able to pray and say, Lord, show me that which I cannot see that is blocking me from giving my all for the kingdom of God. And I want to, and I want to challenge you to bypass the surface bypass the obvious because, because typically when we talk about repenting, 
and we talk about examining our heart, you know, we automatically go to the obvious in our life. But how, how many of you know that sometimes the obvious is not the problem? A lot of times the obvious can be just a distraction from the enemy. And he gets you to spend your energy on fighting the obvious when I want to I encourage you to go past the obvious and go deep into your heart and say, Lord, reveal it to me. And for everybody, it's different. I said for everybody, it's different. And so the world distracts us and diverts us by enticing us to chase after maybe our career or maybe a self-centered dream. The world ensnares us with addictions, ensnares us with mortgages and bad credit. Hello, somebody. See, sometimes we, th we, th we see people with addiction and we say, oh, I'm not that bad. But a lot of times people with bad credit are worse than those that have addiction. I know I wasn't going to get a lot of amens out of that. A lot of people with bad credit can be worse than those with alcoholism, treat you differently. The world consumes us with things that eat up our time so that we don't worship and we don't study and we don't come to church and we don't come to Bible study and we don't give our life for the advancement of the kingdom of God. The world, it consumes our time so that we're not doing what God redeemed us to do. And so Satan... He wants us to spend our time and our talent and our treasure on the world because he knows the world is passing away. He knows the world is passing away. He knows the world is a bum investment. It's a bad investment. If you, if you give your all to this here world, it is a bum investment. And one day all of us are going to stand by ourselves before cre our creator. We're going to stand before the king of kings who is also the judge of the universe. And he's going to say, what did you do with what I deposited inside of you? What did you do with what I gave you to advance my kingdom? And some of us, we're going to turn around and say, God, you don't understand I had to pay my mortgage. You don't understand I had to pay down my credit card. And then I suspect God is going to say, well, do me a favor. Look around and tell me where your house is. And we're going to look around and say, it's not there. And I suspect God is going to say, I told you it's not going to be there. I told you that everything in this world is going to pass away. So you do not give your all for this world. Someone say amen to that. So when you, when you preach on these things, um, it gets a little quiet, but that's okay. And the question is, is often asked, like, what do we do then? What do we do? Like, I hear what you're saying, Pastor Brian. I hear what you're saying. Don't give your life to the world. But what do you do? I have to work. I have to, I have to pay my bills. I have to provide for my family, right? I, I got a business that I got to take care of. I got to go to school. Well, what do I do then? What do I do? Do I quit my job? What do I do? Do I, do I quit my school? Well, what do I do? Do I, you know, deplete my 401k? What do I do? Do I stop watching TV? What do I do? Do I stop listening to music? What do I do? Well, as I mentioned to you last week, I cannot answer that for you because I'm not the Holy Spirit. It is the role of the Holy Spirit to identify those things in your life that are taking the place of Jesus. My job, my role is to inspire you and to challenge you to have a ruthless, honest evaluation in the presence of God. If I can get you to be honest in the presence of God, then the Holy Spirit will do his job. But the problem is getting the people of God to be honest and ruthless in their evaluation. This is one of the reasons why we open up the altar so that you could come before the presence of the Lord and lay your heart down before God and say, Lord, search my heart. And if you find any unclean thing in there, please help me to repent of it and replace it with that which is good. You don't want me to start pointing things out. I would mess around and mess everything up. But if you get before God, he'll with the Holy Spirit will nab some things. <laughs> You know what? You've been using your job as an excuse not to come to church for way too long. Pew. You know what? You've been using baseball as an excuse for way too long not to come to church. Pew. I didn't save you to play baseball. Pew. What do we do? What do we do? This, this is, this is, a, this is a, a tension filled space, my brothers and sisters, because we're swimming in the world. All of us are swimming in the world. It's a, it's a hard place to navigate in. There's, I don't know if we're ever going to get it 100% right, but that doesn't give us an excuse just to throw it all in. Because we're called to live in the world, but not be of the world. 
We're called to be in the world, but not of the world. So what do we do? What do we do? Well, I found a scripture this week, man, that really ministered to my heart by an, an apostle. Paul gives us guidance. He gives us guidance in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 31. Listen to this. This is going to help us navigate through this world. This is going to help us to be in the world, but not of the world. Amen. Which is a tension filled place to live in. Listen to what he says. He says, those who use the things of the world should not become attached to them. Those who use the things of the world should not become attached to them. In other words, my brothers and sisters, use your job for the advancement of the kingdom of God. Use your house for the advancement of the kingdom of God. Use your money for the advancement of the kingdom of God. If you play sports, use it for the advancement of the kingdom of God. But don't be ensnared by them. Don't be attached by them. When God tells you to give it up, you better give it up. When God tells you to let it go, you better be able to let it go. The problem is we don't know how to let things go sometimes. We fall in love with the things of the world and we hold on to it so tightly. The apostle Paul, he gives us some guidance. He said, listen, use the things of the world. Yeah, use it. You better use your house for the glory of God. Use your car for the glory of God. Use your, use your retirement for the glory of God. But don't you dare become attached to them because everything in this world is fading away. And it is a bomb investment. It is a sinking ship. And the enemy is the captain on the sinking ship. And if you give everything you got to this world, you're going to be painting the walls of a sinking ship. Don't become attached to them. So I shared, I shared this with you. I'm going to share it again. Um, you know, in one area of my life, um, I, I try to be a good steward of my money. I try to save money. I got little kids, right? I'm trying to save money. But every now and then, I take a chunk of that money and I give it back to the kingdom of God. I give it back to you. You know why? Because it's more of a faith statement to let the enemy know I'm not ensnared by that. You, I, I can lay it down at the feet of the Lord at any moment. And you don't just wake up like that. You got to start off small. <laughs> you got to... You don't just wake up like that. You got to train yourself unto godliness. Starts off small, man. So maybe you're holding on to something that you need to let go. Paul says, use the things of the world. Just don't be attached to them. Now, listen.